Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep liking, keep sharing, uh, keep commenting, and keep giving us stuff to react to. We appreciate you guys so much. I really hope you're doing all right. And you can find us on Facebook and Instagram as Fanny and Jesse. Head there, say hi, we'll say hi back. Uh, you can find out, you can check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content that we put out there. So today I'm actually going to be reacting to Norman Ali Khan explains why the Quran is from God to Andre Tate. Andre Tate has been actually trending, and there's many videos that out there that people are reacting to and i'm enjoying this video so let's see what this video is all about so without wasting time let's get into it who he was right what would you say to him is one proof that he can look at to, to confirm that islam is the quran is not a man-made book and islam is not a man-made religion it's, it's indeed from the divine being an expert in the quran well um lots can be said um, I'd start off by my own journey to share can you hear a him? couple of things. Can you hear him, Andrew? I can hear yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, nice talking to you. Uh, I think that I, what I like to do uh, when I meet with audiences, uh, professors of other faiths and, you know, intellectuals, anybody, uh, is that I like to invite them to explore the Qur'an, um, you know, intellectually and critically. Uh, that's an invitation that the Qur'an gives. It's interesting that people perceive religion as something that you have to be indoctrinated into and you have to follow it as the dictates are and you don't have to actually critically ask any questions or think and contemplate and the Quran is kind of unique in the way that it presents its message because it's constantly saying don't you then think don't you contemplate haven't you asked questions this is a book for those who seek to ask to have answers it's not actually asking you to shut your brain off and accept what it's saying it's actually asking you to contemplate its message. So it stands really unique in that sense. Um, my own, you know, since it offered that invitation to me, I didn't come to the Quran first as someone who believes in it, as wanted to figure this thing out and, you know, trying to make sense of it. Um, and many of the things that I struggled with in philosophy when I was a student of philosophy, they started getting unraveled as I was getting deeper and deeper in my study of the Quran. It just started kind of untying a lot of those knots. And it's also remarkable that some of the biggest addictions that people suffer from, every one of them is targeted one after the other in the Qur'an. Right? Some of the things that plague humanity, more like gambling, for example, alcohol, for example, intoxication, for example. Like Each of these things is targeted, and you think it's not just a, solving a Muslim problem, it's solving a human problem. It's solving a societal problem, it's solving a global problem by targeting these, each, each of these specific things. Um, the other thing that, I would, that, you know, that really fascinated me, I ended up writing a book on it, ended up getting taught around the world. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's even being used um, in one of the Islamic studies courses at Harvard now, uh, is Divine Speech. It, it's a book I dedicated along with my student to, why is this book, why is this book, why am I believing that it's divine? What's making me think this? And I wrote it for a non-Muslim audience actually. Uh, it's a little bit academic, but the point of it was there are there are elements to this book, and the way that it's structured. That if you first, if you went to the library or you got on Amazon and bought yourself a translation of the Quran, you started reading it, you think the subject is kind of going all over the place, right? It's 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 not staying on the same subject, right? It's saying some profound things, but the organization seems unlike anything I've ever read, uh, and that was one of the things that baffled me at first. Like, why is it organized in this way? And so I, one of the areas of my study became the organization of the Qur'an. Why is it organized in this way? Why is God talking in this disarray? And what I discovered was something absolutely breathtaking, that it's, it's got a symmetrical structure, that you'll have a chapter, for example, that's hundreds of verses, like Baqarah is 286 verses. It's an oral tradition, so it wasn't written first, it was recited and pronounced and memorized in that way. Amounts to about 50 pages in Arabic. Right, but if you study the subject matter, the the the, the nine subjects that are occurring in this long, fifty-page discourse are like subject one is directly tied to subject nine, 
and two to eight and three to seven and four to six and five to right center in the middle. Like there's an incredible three-dimensional structure to the way the argument's being presented. Like human beings, we think linear, right? I'm going to make point A, then I'm going to make point B, then I'm going to make point C. That's how I organize my thoughts. And unless you write something down and say, you know what, I'm going to do this and just for fun, I'm going to do A, B, C, and then go C, B, A. Right? Even doing that in, in six sentences is hard for me as I'm sitting here talking to you because my brain isn't wired that way. But this thousand, you know, millennium and a half old tradition has got multiple surahs and multiple chapters where this kind of a structure is demonstrated over and over again and other kinds of structures. They're like, this is not possible for a human being to do. Linguistically, it's not possible. I'm a, stu a student of linguistics. It's just not possible. These kinds of structures, this kind of organization. That, that's one of the things I wrote about in the book. And I started, ended up teaching courses on this stuff. Um, but for just, at a, just to take a step back level, my invitation to anybody is put your preconceived notions aside. Take what you may have heard about Islam, what you may have thought about it from your own faith tradition's point of view. Put all of that aside. And you know, I, I wouldn't even invite somebody to read the Quran to accept Islam. Read the Quran neutrally and get a first, uh, you know, an unbiased impression. And I would think it's really difficult to not walk away truly being moved by what you're, what you're being exposed to, truly being hit by what you're exposed to. Uh, the, the final thing I'll say is there is a huge tragedy in the world today that even most Muslims aren't as aware of the Qur'an as they should be, right? So Muslims don't become a really good representation of the contents of the book, right? So even disconnecting yourself from the Muslim bias, I'm just going to read this for myself with no other influences as much as possible. At the end of the day, human beings can, are going to have some bias or the other, but as much as I can consciously be disconnect it from bias and give it a shot and read it i think that that would be my invitation to anybody andrew any question any uh final question anything you'd like to ask him while he's here what happened was because we got delayed with the program he next guest was coming in so uh, <laughs> with you but this is amazing you can look him up actually online and you'll see a ton of his videos I'm going to. I'm going to read that book as well because it was really yeah. interesting what you were saying. It was really interesting what you After were saying. After the show, about I'd like to send you a copy as a gift. And also, yes. your invitation is exactly the way I would have done it anyway. I would have read it. I'm going to read it. I'm, I've yet to read the Quran, but it's certainly something I'm going to do. I'm going to read it without a preconceived notion, without a preconceived idea. And I think that's the best way to do things because you're right. There's too much bias in the world. But um, from from what I know, I think we just talked about for the last hour. From what I know, I have absolute respect for the religion and respect for the faith, and I've been very very blessed to be on the show. So thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. And if you like this episode of The Dean Show, like this video. Share this video far and wide and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I guess this is just a clip someone took and put together for the sake of just reacting. Uh, because I feel like there's so much that I've missed. And I really don't like it when I miss a lot. But I still have to uh, say something. At the end of the day, I love the advice that the guy gives we think we should follow a religion we feel like we should be tied down by that religion it's not just about being tied down to something you have to learn about that something that you're following you don't have to be blind in your faith you don't have to follow something because it pleases people you don't have to do something because it pleases people that's why the advice at the end of this short clip is um do something without no bias on it or anything do it for yourself if you're going to read the quran read it for yourself not because someone is constantly pushing you pushing you pushing read because you genuinely want to learn from that you genuinely want to grasp what it's all about don't go in saying ah now let me find the wrongs in this you get a pencil underline underline all the wrongs that you think you're finding the best thing this is what i do when i'm studying the best thing is um not the best thing I'm saying this is what I do when I'm studying so when I'm studying for something doing some research for 
any of my work what i do is actually just to read through something yes this is the material i want to use i read through the first time sometimes i feel like um i still don't get it and i go through again i actually go through maybe a good three to five times through something for me to actually grasp what that paper is talking about or the material is talking about you can do the same with the quran if that's the that's what you want to go through get the quran read through no bias no nothing no expectations nothing just read through have an open mind i feel like many people learn more when they have an open mind that's why when i see people going to uh these uh, places to ask questions maybe they want to ask dr zakina a question i mean to that a question they go they're in that audience i feel like they're actually open to things although sometimes they come out as challenging i feel like they're open that's why you're there in the audience trying to find out one or two things you have to realize that you have to open yourself up to a world beyond what you actually believe what i think now is not what i think and what i know now is not the last thing that any human being will ever know there is knowledge beyond me there is knowledge out there don't be so naive to keep away to keep yourself away from learning more things don't be so arrogant enough to think you know everything in life there is many things you can learn from people out there books out there and it's really really up to you to take that uh time to learn that thing or not to look into that thing or not otherwise um open yourself up to knowledge don't be annoyed at all be humble in everything you do and just let information flow if you want to learn about something go out there ask someone who has more knowledge about it and learn from them otherwise just remember to um stay open to stuff let me know what you guys feel about this video make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video